Harvest Church. Man, it's good to see you guys this morning. Welcome to the 1130 service. Today is July 30th, and I believe that today will be marked as a day that someone's life changed forever. We're gonna experience that today as a family. Before we get started, if this is your first time, I wanna say welcome. We're excited that you're joining us. I'd love to meet you after the service, but do me a favor and text the word hey to the number that's gonna come up on the screen. It's a way for us to connect with you, get to know you a little bit before we meet you after the service. We'll have a gift, some coffee for you. But to go ahead and do that. And then for everyone else, go ahead and stand with me. We are gonna start this morning with a word from the book of Psalms. And this is what it says, Psalms 107. Let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. Here's why. He's better than anyone could ever imagine. Yes, he's always loving and kind and his faithful love never ends. So go ahead, let everyone know about it. Tell the world how he broke through and delivered you and me from the power of darkness and has gathered us together from all over the world. He has set us free to be his very own. So lift up your hands and thank God for his marvelous kindness and for all his miracles of mercy for those he loves. Let's worship together this morning. Let's give God praise this morning, amen. Sometimes there's an ocean that lies in between. I'll keep on traveling the path where you've been till I'm right where you want me. That's where I'll be. Freedom's coming and it has a name. Oh, no room for my chains.
have an awesome moment of celebration. So if you want to take a quick seat, we're going to do water baptisms. And here's what's so amazing about that is water baptism is a public declaration of lives that have been given to Jesus Christ. And that is something that we get to celebrate right here, right now here at Cross. So we're going to start with our very first baptism for today. My name is Ethan. Two wonderful Christian parents raised me in a Christian home. I got saved when I was seven and the story of Jesus moved me, but I didn't fully understand what I believed. As a teenager, I rebelled and indulged in everything. I never denied Christ, but I never submitted my life to him either. After many years of selfishly following my desires, I became more and more aware of a large hole in my life. In 2020, while at home during the pandemic, I began reading my Bible. Through the power of the word and engaging in daily prayer, my heart was deeply changed. I recommitted my life to Christ and received the Holy Spirit. Everything about me changed. The way I see the world and everyone in it was transformed. And today I am being baptized to publicly declare my love and alliance to Jesus and his church. Praise the Lord. I'm home. Praise the Lord. Ethan, wow, what a big deal. We're so proud of you, man. You desire to serve Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Live firm fully. Man, it is my honor, along with family, spiritual family. See, Ethan, today you're being baptized into a family. You're being a part. And so it is our honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Ellie. I grew up around, yeah, go ahead. I grew up around Christianity and attended church, but never committed to the Lord. I fell into peer pressure, surrounded myself with the wrong people. A few months ago, I came back to cross and started to turn my life around. I stopped being around people and things that weren't good for me and gave my heart to Christ. I'm getting baptized today to share with everyone that I'm walking with God and following the steps of Jesus. We are so proud of you, Ellie. We are so proud of what God has been doing in your life and what he's gonna keep doing. Do you promise to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Yeah, do you wanna live for him all the days of your life? Yes, I believe that. And I believe in this moment that you're never gonna forget who you are, that you're always gonna remember that you belong to him and that you are God's daughter. And so we celebrate that with you today. And it is my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. My name is Presley and I'm 12 years old. When I was 11, I came to Cross Church. Before I came, I knew who God was, but never understood the power of God. I thought that if you lived a good life, you would be accepted and go to heaven, but you have to work for it. Since being at Cross, I have learned the truth about God and I'm ready to live for him and receive Jesus as my savior. I am his daughter and through the Holy Spirit, I live in his presence. excited and so proud of you. We're about to see a whole family get baptized and that just never gets old, you guys. That never gets old. And so I'm excited to see what God is doing in your life. And I know that he's going to continue to move each and every day in you. Are you ready to serve the Lord your God all the days of your life with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength to follow him? Yes. You're going to know that you're the daughter of a king that makes you a princess. Okay, you belong to him. And it is my honor and my joy to baptize you today in the name of the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, we're just getting started. Hi, my name is Parker. 
Before summer camp, before summer camp, I didn't understand what it meant to follow Jesus. At camp, they really broke it down to where I could understand what it meant. So when we came back, I decided to follow Jesus and be baptized. I'm being baptized today to tell everyone I love Jesus and want to follow him all the days of my life. Wow, Parker, we, we are so proud of you, darling. And you have been a joy since the moment you walked in. Such a precious smile. Turn and look at everyone. Let everyone see that gorgeous smile of yours. Such a, such a big deal, the decision that you're making today. And we know that God has great plans for you. So do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength? Yes. And do you, uh, do you promise to live for him all the days of your life? Well, darling, it's my pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So good. Now it's time for Mama. Hi, my name is Brittany, and at the age of 33, I've decided to give my life to Christ. Growing up, I knew God, but did not dedicate time to Him in attending church. I've been searching for the right church to call home, and when my three children and I attended in March, we knew that we had found it. After seeing what God did for my daughters at summer camp, it gave me the confidence to take the next step in my faith as well. So today, I am being baptized to continue to give my life completely to God and continue to be an example of His love to my kids. We celebrate you today. We're so excited. As someone who's raised by a single, single mom, I'm proud of you. And so see what, the, what your daughters, how much they've grown and grown in the Lord and how you've grown and you have been you have been live to us, your daughters have been live to our student ministry, and we're proud of you. And so, uh, do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength? Yeah, she's not even gonna let me finish. Do you promise to live for him all the days of your life? Well, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. After a life full of trauma and abuse starting as a child, I grew up hurting and lonely. But while I was hurting, I also knew God loved me and would save me. So I always prayed and believed God would save me despite all the family dysfunction. I see that he really did. God was keeping me. A few years ago, my sister, cousin, and boyfriend all died and I wanted to give up. But God just wouldn't let go of my heart. He kept drawing me back to him. So on July 14th, I got back in the Word and read James 1-2 about how we can count the trials as joy because the work in us, perseverance, and when perseverance finishes its work, we will lack nothing. And I know God was promising to see me through everything. So I recommitted everything to Him in this last month and have gotten into His Word and trusted Him with all my heart. I want to get baptized today to leave my past fully behind and to show everyone my faith in Jesus and not in what was done in the past that was meant to destroy me. I re read recently that redemption means saving or being saved from sin, error, and evil. I know that because of my faith in Jesus, he will finish his redeeming work in me. Wow. wow. I love it. I love it. Man, we are so excited for you with your spiritual family, your, your extended family with you today. Man, we're celebrating with you. Desire to serve the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. <laughs> that was the best answer. Her yes was the best yes I've ever gotten ever in baptismal. I wish everybody would be like that. We'll keep that between us, and I loved it. It is because of that that we are so honored, Roxy, to baptize you in the name of the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Come on! Yes! So good. So good. Hi, my name is Jenny. 
Before Jesus, I was influenced by fake friends and my heart turned hard, even turning to darkness and turning to witchcraft. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Yes, he did. And told me that what I was doing was wrong. My mom and I gave our lives to Jesus. I am being baptized today because I want to show my commitment to Jesus and be full of the Holy Spirit. Jenny, we are so proud of you, sweetie. We love seeing what God's doing in your heart. Desire to live for Jesus with everything you got on the inside. Yeah. Wow, what a big deal. Well, I believe that his Holy Spirit is just gonna fill you up with all the right stuff. He's gonna do a work that only he can do in your life. So it is our honor with family, with your extended family, your spiritual family, to baptize you. Come here, Mama. To baptize you in the name of the Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, come on. That's awesome. Love it. Yes. My name is Zinia, and I have known of Jesus since I was six years old, as my parents and grandparents were Catholic. About a year ago, my family started to be attacked by the enemy. One day, we were watching a preacher from Brazil and responded to receive Jesus. Ever since then, his protection and saving grace have covered us from horrible things. Yes. I'm so happy to know and follow Jesus and be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm being baptized today because he has healed us and saved us in miraculous ways. I've come to follow him. Yes. Come on, so good. Yes. Zinga, it is such an honor to watch what God has done in your heart. And uh, you desire to serve Jesus with everything inside of you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's because of your confession of faith, we are honored as your spiritual family to baptize you in the name of the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, celebrate, people! Stand all awesome. across the room. Let's stand all across the room. Let's continue to celebrate life change through our praise in this place.
Let our praise please your ears today. God, we know where praise is, anxiety cannot live. God, we know where praise is, depression cannot live. God, we know where praise is, fear has to go. So Jesus, we honor you with our worship. We honor you with our praise. For you're King of kings, you are Lord of lords. By your great sacrifice, we are saved. So we honor you. We thank you, Father. We praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen, amen, amen. Come on, you can give him better praise than that, church. Come on, come on. That's right, that's right. We're so thankful you've worshiped with us today. Thanks for spending time worshiping Jesus with us. Why don't you go ahead and grab a seat as we continue with our service today. Good stuff. Hey, good morning, Cross Church. How are we doing today? Doing all right? It is great to see you today. You're looking good. Look at the person next to you and say, you're looking really good today. Hopefully, if you're married, you looked at your spouse and said that. If not, that's on you. Um, hey, we are so glad that you are with us today. Welcome, and welcome to our Summer Splash services. Man, weren't those baptisms incredible today? Man, give a round of applause for that. So good. We baptized over 15 people today, and man, just so cool, both services, how God's kind of working and doing some beautiful things in our church family. God's moving, right? amen? He is. And so, you know, uh, if you're a guest today, man, we're so honored that you chose to spend some time with us today, kind of rearrange your schedule to be here today. What a big deal. Thanks so much for showing up. Can we give all of our guests a round of applause today? Welcome. So glad you're in the house. Big deal. Hey, so with that said, um, there's something, there's something about new life. There's something about an experience where we see resurrection occur, new hope, new transformation, where God is working in our hearts and our lives. It's kind of like baptism, it's, it's kind of like a seed. You take a seed and you plant it. It goes under the dirt like a believer will go under the water. And through a type of death, it breaks through the shell and sprouts through that dirt, new life, new resurrection. And the seed that started today with so many people in first and second service, that, that new life is just going to continue, amen? It's gonna to continue to grow. And here's what I know though, God has planted seeds within each one of our hearts today. And new life doesn't start and end only right here. We each can have it today. There's new hope and new life transformation, new growth, new possibilities for you today. Today's called new life. And I'd like to, I mean, let me just ask a question. How many of you would like some new life from God today? Raise your hand. I certainly would some new hope, some new freedom, 
And that is possible. And so my key text today is Mark 4. If you wanna open up your Bibles, your Android, your iPhone, whatever you got, and go to Mark 4. And I'm gonna read verses two through 20, skip a couple in the middle. And uh, we've been in this series called Parables, More to the Story. And I wanna jump into one of the parables that Jesus shares that probably many of us have heard before, but I believe there's some new life application for us today. Verse two of Mark four, Jesus taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came up and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up and the plants were scorched, And they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear any grain. Still other, other fruit, other seed, excuse me, fell upon good soil and it came up and it grew and it produced a crop, some multiplying 30, 60, or 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. Skipping ahead to verse 13, then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? This one, he's kind of saying, this is low hanging fruit. It's kind of basic stuff. He's like, hey, the farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word has been sown, where the word of God has been invested into their life. And some people are like that seed along the path, the word's been sown, and as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and he takes the word that has been sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word at once and they receive it with joy. But since they have no root, it only lasts a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. And still others are like seeds sown among thorns. They hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things comes in and chokes the word, suffocates the word, making it unfruitful. Others like seeds sown in good soil, hear the word, accept it and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, and some a hundred times what was sown. 30, 60, a hundred times fold. A seed shows its fruitfulness by what it multiplies. A seed shows its fruitfulness by what it produces. Now, I think we understand that a seed reaches maturity when it shows that fruitfulness. In the same way, a Christian, a believer, shows their fruitfulness when that seed of their life, what the word of God has started inside them, matures to a place of fruitfulness. There's a level of maturity that as believers, growth that I think we all want to have. And so I started to think about the idea of fruit because the word of God says that we are supposed to bear fruit of the spirit. And those, those elements of fruitfulness in our life are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. Against these things, there is no law. These things should be evident in our life. It should be manifest in our life. We want the seed that God has started to produce fruitfulness, Christian maturity in our life. You with me? Say yes. And so... I started to think, what does, what does good fruit look like? I mean, if you're asking yourselves what Christian maturity looks like, you should be asking yourselves, all right, what does fruitfulness look like in God's kingdom? What does good fruit look like? What does Christian maturity look like in our lives? First of all, I think fruit always has to bear the character of the tree that it's from. You will never find an orange tree bearing apples, right? I mean, you'll never see an apple tree bearing oranges. 
fruit, if it's mature fruit, will always bear the character of the tree that it comes from. Said this way, if you're going to be a mature Christian, you will always reflect the character of the life-giving source of Jesus Christ. There's going to be something about your nature, something about your heart that's going to reflect him. Question, if you want to know if you're growing in faithfulness and Christian maturity and fruitfulness in your life, does your life look more like Jesus today than it did a year ago? Is there something in your life that's growing, man? I mean, the fruit always reflects the character of the Savior. Second thing I've noticed about fruit is fruit is always visible. Have you ever seen in invisible fruit? <laughs> Trick question. No, you haven't. But a lot of Christians believe that they can just live with invisible fruit. And bottom line is, you know that you're growing into Christian fruitfulness, Christian maturity, when you're no longer a secret agent for Jesus Christ. Some of us think we're like covert spies for God. You can just knock that out. Like there, there's nowhere in the Bible that God says, hey, I want you to be a spy for me. I want you to go covert for me. No, no, no. He says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deeds, your good works and give God glory. Yes. He's like, I want you to be salt, man. I want you to season your coworkers. I want you to season your work environment. I want you to season the culture around you. I want you to be salt and light, light that pierces the darkness. Some of us have so privatized our faith. Well, I'm just godly and I will just privatize my faith. <laughs> Find a verse that tells me to do that. He says, let your light so shine. Stop making your fruit invisible. It's gotta come out. So not only does it come from the character of the tree, fruit always comes from that tree, then fruit is always visible. I think also fruit is always beneficial. Fruit is always beneficial. The only fruit that eats itself is rotten fruit. Selfish fruit self-destructs. And what happens a lot of times is we forget that a fruit is only good when it's beneficial for somebody else. You have been given fruit in your life, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, kind of self-control, to be given away to the community, to the environments that you are in. Is your life, if, if you are growing in Christian maturity, if you're saying, I want to be fruitful in my life, are, is your life beneficial? Are you serving those around you? Question, who is wanting to follow you? Who is wanting to be discipled by you? Who is saying, I like the Jesus that's inside of you. I want more of that. And you're at, they're asking you some questions. They're, trying, they're curious. They're trying to get a little bit closer. God wants you to go out of your way to be beneficial. Folks, if you're not, if you're not serving your self-centered fruit and, and, and you're becoming rotten to the core, whether we realize it or not, that's why God has given us environments to serve the world around us, serve the church around us, other believers around us. We know that fruit is good because it's beneficial. So, a seed becomes good fruit. Now, if God's word is the seed, as the parable describes, we understand that God's word does not return void. Whenever God's word goes forth in a message, or you read scripture, or the Holy Spirit kind of speaks to your heart, God's word is kind of being thrown into your life. We understand that the seed is good. It's good seed. That seed, the word of God represents God's nature, God's, God's DNA, his character. It's who he is. When that's thrown out, it's good. The seed is always good. The seed is always good. But then we wonder, well, then why am I not seeing the life change that I'm wanting? Like, I mean, if we're honest with ourselves as Christians or people that are looking at this whole Jesus thing, we're like, well, I want my life to change. I want new life, but it doesn't seem like anything's really changing in my life. See, the problem, my friend, isn't with the seed. The problem is with the soil. 
God's word, if we believe as Christians that God's word is life-changing, then whenever our life isn't changing, there's a problem with the soil. And so the question is, then what kind of soil, what kind of heart are you living with today? What's the condition of your heart? The parable breaks it down and says either there's no soil, there is rocky soil, there's thorny soil. And eventually I'll get to the good soil. We all think we're in that category, right? But I think we've all found ourselves in each of these categories probably. So I'd like to break it down. Let's talk about no soil for a second. So in this parable, scripture says that the farmer, and that's Jesus Christ, he is the word incarnate, he's the word. But anytime the word is pronounced, it's like the word is being sown to the hearts, to the listeners who has ears, let them hear. Hear means not just to understand, but to obey and to apply. So the seed is being thrown and it says it goes out on a path and and immediately, because there is no room for that seed to take hold on that hardened path where there's no soil or that, that soil, that path has been trodden down by the circumstances, the situations of life, because there's no room for growth. It's so hard. It says after time, the enemy, Satan, actually swoops down and takes up, eats up the seed, takes it away. There's some of us in this room that whenever the seed is thrown out to us, whether the spirit is talking to us, maybe it's a conversation, maybe it's God's word coming into our mind, maybe it's something we read, maybe it's God just tugging on our heart, maybe it's something the pastor says. And and, and when the seed is thrown, we kind of, our heart kind of crosses its arms and says, I will not be moved. And you're right, you will not be moved. God will not violate your personhood. God is, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. So he won't force himself on you. And and so what happens is the seed has a chance to grow, but with a hardened heart, it only gets harder. Do you realize that when seed is thrown out and we reject the word of God in that moment, our heart actually becomes hardened and more calloused in that area? And so this idea of, well, one day I'll get my heart right with God. I've just got too much on my mind, too much on my plate. I'll deal with it one day. That's a myth. It's a straight up myth. Can God show up at any time and do a work anytime? Yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, we only respond to him because he makes our heart sensitive to begin with. So here's the question. If you're feeling like your heart's being touched by God and the word's going out and you don't respond in that moment, you are actually calcifying, you're hardening your heart towards receiving from God in a future moment. If we can't respond to God today, why do you think you'll respond to God in the future? We won't. So I wanna encourage some of us because I think a lot of us probably have been at this place or maybe are at this place right now. Maybe this is you. You feel like I just, I got dragged here because, well, my, my spouse or I had to or, or I, I don't even know why I'm here if this stuff is even real. Can I just encourage you? Open up your heart a little bit and allow God to kind of say, son, daughter, see what he might speak to you there. Don't let your heart be so hard. There's no soil. Then secondly, there's, there's rocky soil. Rocky soil. The idea of rocky soil is that there's a little bit of topsoil on the rocks and a plant, some sort of new life, receives the word of God and your life quickly receives the word of God and it sprouts something quickly. Have you ever had grass like come through in your driveway or your sidewalk? It's a little bit like that, right? Like it comes up, but the moment you understand that the sun beats down and the wind kind of hits it, eventually that's going to blow away. And the scripture says that it blows away because there's no root system. There's nothing inside of us that, that really is secured by God. The interpretation says that when trouble and sorrow come, when trouble and heartache come, when trouble and persecution come, those circumstances just kind of sweep away all the new growth that's happening because the root system wasn't deep enough. It wasn't deep enough. 
it's amazing how many people respond to God and they have a cool moment, maybe even in today, into church, and, and you have this response with God at, during the service, or, or you read something in scripture, and you're like, oh, mind blown, this is incredible, or you have this cool conversation with somebody and you feel like God's doing a work, and, or something, man, you, you have this moment. Like, we've all had moments, right? A lot of us, we've had these moments where we're like, oh, something so, like, and you might even come up to me. I have people come up to me all the time. Pastor, oh, man, God really touched me today. That was so good. I mean, I, I got the spiritually goosily bumpies and everything. I'm like, oh, I was crying. How many of you are like, where's the Kleenex? It, it's just like one of those moments. And you are so jazzed because... You think God is doing something new in your life, and he is, but because there's no soil, when trouble or persecution comes, you walk outside these doors and you get a prognosis of sickness in your family. Someone you love passes away. You lose your job. Maybe your house gets foreclosed upon. Something totally changes, shifts with your children. The moment that the trouble and that persecution comes, it's like everything just gets swept away. Your faith, your trust, your dependency upon God gets swept away. Why? Because the roots did not go down deep. Like Some of us say we're so committed to God but our version of commitment to God is internet church. Like we're not committed to the body. We're not committed to being the body. And so when something happens to our body, we are swept away because we're not connected to the body. Or our version of commitment is internet likes and social posts. And the moment I disagree with something, well, I will remove myself from that environment. I'll remove, and we unfriend, we unlike, and, 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 it's just challenging because there's no roots that go deep. Here's what I found. When, when, when you go through a hard time, trouble and persecution, either, either your roots will go deeper in God or you will get blown away. There's no middle ground. Trouble and persecution actually can make you grow stronger with God. Matter of fact, it's almost always how it does. And finally, we've got thorny soil, right? And it's this idea within the story that the word of God is sown out, seeds are planted, and something sprouts up, something begins. It's a beautiful work. There's real life there. But then after time, other things also sprout up. Weeds, thorns. It begins to crowd out to suffocate out the word of God in your life. I'm gonna start preaching good right now because people are about to get mad at me. Here's how we crowd it out. It's called summer ball. Uh, 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 uh. Oh man, I would never do anything like that. Ooh, look, I got skills. No look. (laughs) Oh, your pastor isn't as white as you thought. Uh, uh. Our calendars, our schedules, because we've made our family, our children, idols. And bottom line, what we do unintentionally, when we put all those things, and I'm all about sports ball, sports, uh, summer sports, you know what I'm trying to say, sports ball. I can't even say it. God help us. We don't do it. Can I tell you why we don't do sports ball? Because bottom line, everyone, you make your own decision. I'm fine with it. There's tons of people in our church that do. But we decided that we would make sure that there would never be a distraction in our family that would take us away from God's house. That's bottom line. You're like, well, you're a pastor. No, I made that decision when I was 15 years old. State select soccer player. I could have went very far in soccer. I was actually pretty good. And I, b- before people traveled, this was before people traveled. And uh, we made a decision. I made a decision as a young kid. Did I still play soccer? Yeah, I loved it. But it wasn't my life. I didn't allow it to suffocate. Or you go on and you're like, maybe it's not, 
you know, traveling stuff or your calendar. Maybe you're a fashionista. Do we have any fashionistas in the house today? Come on, that is not a trick question. Don't worry, it's all good. I like fashion. My wife makes me look really good sometimes. If, I, if you ever look at me like, Ugh, I dressed myself, there you go. Uh, I love Target, we buy a lot from Target. No, anyway, but uh, here's, here's what happens. A lot of times we, we're kind of fashionista. We care so much about our clothes, how much we look, how we look, our brand, all that stuff. And what happens is we actually start to suffocate, choke out what God is doing in our life. Now, do we need clothes and all this? Yeah, absolutely. We need all these things. These aren't bad things. Matter of fact, they start out as good things, but good things can crowd out the God things in our life. And, and so it, it, it's a problem. And so after that, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's not your fashion. Maybe, maybe it's your education. I love education. I genuinely enjoy it. But if I put all my focus all of my support into the education in my life and the degrees in my life, I can actually unintentionally suffocate out what God wants to grow in me. Because that becomes my focus instead of, instead of God. How about a new car? Oh, he's preaching good now. Is there anything wrong with car? Absolutely not. Is there anything wrong with a nice car, a new car? Nope, absolutely not. But the question is, is there anything in our life that is actually starting to pile on and to suffocate, crowd out, choke out what God wants to do in our lives? The qu- Maybe you're here. Maybe this is you. Unintentionally, we, we don't even mean for it to happen, but or maybe, maybe it's not any of these things. Maybe it's just the almighty dollar. Our career, our life, we're going after, we just, we just want to make a lot and do a lot. And I'm, I'm all about providing for your family, but, but are you the source of your provision or is God the source of your provision? And, and it's choking. It's hard to breathe. If your faith is suffocating, then maybe there's some things that are choking, that you need to address. That, that's thorny soil, right? Finally, we've got good soil. And how many of you would like to be in this category, good soil? That's not a trick question, please raise your hand. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna ask you, we had this discussion last week. How many of you would like to be good soil? Raise your hand on this side. All right, sounds great. I just love you. It was this service last week, wasn't it? Come on. It, you would know if you were here. Only five people said yes. Where's the rest of you at? Come on. Um, we want to be responsive to God's word. That's what this whole message is about, is responding to God's word. And so it's this final idea of, of good soil. And if the problem isn't with the seed... The problem is with the what? Soil. All right, thank you. I wanna get all of you. If the problem is not with the seed, it's with the? Soil. Perfect, awesome, I feel so good right now. Thank you so much. You help me preach better and, sh- and faster when, when you're with me. Um, if the problem is not with the seed, the focus is on the soil, good soil becomes the right environment for new life, environment. So how do I cultivate Here's the obvious question, right? How do I cultivate good soil, a good heart? How do I cultivate the right environment in my life where God can bring new life? I love how Dr. Tony Evans describes it, and he says it's a lot like popcorn. And it's this idea that when you, well, let me ask you this. How many of you enjoy popcorn in the house? You got some popcorn? Wow, all right. More popcorn people in this service than the last one. All right, so we like popcorn, and we understand, though, that when you eat popcorn, you didn't, you, you don't eat popcorn to eat the kernel, right? You eat it for the popped corn, <laughs> right? And so you eat it for the popped corn, and, and so what you do is you take those kernels, you take those seeds, if you will, and you put them in the right environment, 
called the microwave. <laughs> and radiation, the miracle of radiation, heat works within that environment that you just put those seeds in. And many of you might not realize this, inside of each and every kernel, there's actually a little bit of moisture. And so when you put that seed into the microwave, that moisture inside the kernel starts to heat up. And what happens when water heats up? It turns into... Oh, God, help us. Lord, I like to pray. Maybe some of us need to do the education thing again. All right. Water turns into steam. It's one of those things that happens. Don't have the time, all right? You're giving me some low-hanging fruit, and I'm not going after it. But steam rises, steam rises, and what happens is over time, as that steam builds up within the kernel, it creates pressure. It creates pressure until eventually what's happening on the inside can no longer be contained by the outside. And because of the environment, here's what happens. That corn starts to go pop, 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 pop. Right? Because what is occurring on the inside can no longer be contained by the shell on the outside. The outer body, the outer form is transformed because of what has been performed on the inside. And I'm just telling you right now, Christians, God wants us to pop, 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 pop in this church and in this community with your friends, your relationships. He wants what's inside to not be contained. Yes. So good. That's what he wants to do. Yes. But some of us are still stuck taking that kernel. We're flipping it into our mouth, just the raw kernel. We're like, if I chew on this long enough, it will pop. No, that's crazy talk. You know it's crazy talk. But we do it with God all the time. We're like, well, if I put my life into this environment, I will pop. No, you will not. We do it all the time with God. We do it all the time with this culture. We think that if I just do things my way, put my seed in this environment, this environment, this environment, that eventually I will pop. No, God says, take it out of your mouth, put it in the microwave, create the right environment. And when that environment is correct, then things start to pop in your life again. God, God wants to do a work in you. It's, it's amazing, though, how often we, we remove ourselves from the gathered church. It's amazing how often we put ourselves in the environment of the wrong relationships, wrong friendships, instead of the right relationships and the right friendships. There's so many different environments, and you want to make sure that you put yourself in the right one. Because if you're inconsistent with, the, with your heart being in the right kind of environment, you're just not going to pop. You won't, it won't work. Remember, it is not the seed's fault, it's the soil's fault. If God's power, his truth isn't transforming us into new life, and we've all been in all of these spots. Don't feel bad, we've all been here. Jesus is telling this parable because he's like, you're gonna be here, then you're gonna be here, you're gonna be here. It's cool. But God's like, I, I wanna work on the condition of your heart so things can transform and so things can change. So, so the question is, how do I make the right soil? Let's go in deeper on that. How, how do I cultivate my heart so it's the right kind of heart? It's the right kind of environment. Well, well, remember, God's word tells us that the seed to reach the heart not just the ears, but if the seed is really gonna reach the heart, he who has ears, let him hear. You're gonna have to listen, you're gonna have to obey, you're gonna have to actually produce in your life. There's a level of accountability there. And if we wanna create the right condition in our heart, obviously we wanna do opposite of what these illustrations just were, correct? We wanna do the opposite of that. But I wanna give you one final text from God's word on how to create the right condition in our heart. And it's found in James 1. If you've got your Bibles, go there. James 1, uh, verses 19. And uh, let me read it to you. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, 
slow to speak and slow to become angry. How many of you have heard this verse before? A lot of us, yeah, absolutely, good. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. If you wanna become the right soil, you must first be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. This could be said, if you want to become the right environment, the right kind of soil, you need to be slow to speak your opinion, quick to listen to God's word, and when the two come in conflict, when your soul wants to get angry, because that's exactly what will happen, you don't allow that right, that anger to be the ultimate fruitfulness in your life. You submit and you allow where your will and God's will to intersect, you allow him to win. Slow to give your opinion. Our world loves to give their opinion. Social media is an example of this. We love, we love to voice our opinion, but can I say, like I said last week, there is no authority in your opinion. It's not. I don't care what you think. I care what God's word says. The only authority that is lasting, the only, what does it say? Uh, uh, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. It does. And so if you want to have real authority, you look at the scripture, you look at the word of God. That is the actual thing that, that does it for us. And so we receive God's word within our life. And when the two come in conflict, it's going to make you angry. It's going to make you mad. It's going to make you ticked off. Why? Because your way isn't God's way. Um, some of us are surprised, like, when things don't seem to work out. Can I just tell you, it's not much of a surprise. We're all sin sinful, fallen creatures. We all need a savior. And, and I think it's just so important that when our soul says, God, I don't want that way, the question is, will you submit to his way? If you don't, your soul, soul and soil, huh, see what? What's happening in there? It will actually get hardened or it will get softer. It never remains neutral. It just doesn't. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. So if you get mad at God, it's not gonna change anything because God doesn't change when you whine about it. A lot of us are treating God the same way we treated and manipulated our parents when we were younger. If we whined about something long enough, we'd get our way. And we are living now in a culture that looks at God's word and whines and complains about it and says, it doesn't make me feel right. I don't like what it's saying. And we're trying to get God to change his word. The problem, my friends, is not the seed. The problem is the soil. Yes. And in a culture that says, you're triggering me, God's like, I'm sorry, but I'm not. My word doesn't change. And you have to understand that my word doesn't change so that it might change you. God's word does not accommodate us. God's word transforms us. And so God says, you know what? I am the Lord, I change not. Malachi says, why? Because as an unchanging word, it can transform our every day. It really can. And a culture that whines says, no, I don't like it that way. God's like, I don't, I don't stink and care. Because my opinion does not change. Truth does not change. I have provided a word to transform and to change you. Therefore, verse 21, next verse, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word of God implanted in you which can save you, can save your soul. If you want the soil 
of your heart to be right, to receive the word of God, to allow it to transform you, to create the right environment. We must be willing to allow God to address our sins. If you are unwilling to allow God to address your sins, and friends, we've all got sin. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Then the soil of your heart will remain rocky, thorny, or non-existent. God won't do his work in you if you are refusing for his word to work in you. If you're refusing for God to work, he won't. And can I say this? Refusing is different than struggling. We struggle with sin. Again, it's why we need a savior. God's not looking for for perfection. He's looking for a humble trust and dependency to go in his direction. So if you're struggling today, welcome to the club. We call that church. There's a difference between if you're struggling and if you're unwilling. See, God is going to do his work. He's gonna point out things through the Holy Spirit and he's gonna say, daughter, daughter, I love you so much. I've got so much for you. I want, I want so much from you. And, 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 and if you would just give me your friendships, I, 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 would, I, would, I would spring some new life in you because your friendships are putting you in the wrong kind of environment and they're just breaking your soul. They're, it's, it's creating some rocky thorns in your life and you're, you're so worried about appearances and all this stuff. And daughter, I, I just, I, I, I love you. Would you give that to me? Watch new growth in your life. Son, son. I've been throwing the word in your direction for months. Your heart has gotten harder and harder. Because out of fear and insecurity, you're not responding to me. I am delivering the word to transform your soul, but the enemy of your soul, Satan, like a, like a bird's gonna swoop down and he's gonna take it away because what you treat as worthless, he understands is priceless. So allow my word to transform you. Stop hiding from me. Stop running from me. Stop turning your back on me. Today, the word is going forth in your heart. Respond to it. Respond to it. God's gonna point out and he's gonna address some things in our life. And Will we be open to him working in that moment? Because when we respond to him, here's the incredible news. It's good news. When we respond to the Holy Spirit and we allow him to address, address those, those places within our heart, those sin areas in our heart, what happens is the byproduct of that is fruitfulness. It is a crop of 30, 60, and 100 fold. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna make fun of him right now. Who is it, Grant Cardone? Is it 10X life or is it 100X life? 10? He could only get to 10. I'm dead serious right now. He could only get to 10. God promises 30, 60, 100 fold return. I'm sorry, but sign me up for that kind of life. That's the life and that's the multiplying power I wanna have. A life that transforms not just my bank account, but the community around me. Because the word of God has got a hold of me. And when it does, something on the inside can't be contained any longer. And it eventually makes its way out. And pop, 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 pop. And life is transformed. This is a life that God has promised for you. Not only those who get baptized, but every single one of us that receive the word of God. This is our inheritance. Does the verse say, 
he who has ears, let them hear. Let them believe, let them receive. So here's how we're gonna close out this time. I, I like to pray for you and I believe that we're probably in one of these four stations. Maybe you feel like you're in a couple right now. But God would like you to respond right where you're at. And so I'd love for you to just bow your heads, close your eyes. And, and I'm gonna go through these four, or really the three areas. And if you say, you know what, pastor, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'd love for you to just slip up your hand, wave it at me. And I'd like to pray for you right where you, right where you sit. I won't call you out or embarrass you, but first of all, if you're in the room right now and you say, you know what, my relationship with God is non-existent. It feels like I've got no soil in my life. It feels like my heart maybe is hard towards God. And today, pastor, I would like God to change that. If that's you, can you just slip up your hand and wave it at me? Say, yeah, pastor, that's me. Awesome, awesome, I appreciate that response. Thank you so much, very cool. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Thank you, my heart's hard. I get it, I've been there. Appreciate those responses. You're responding to God's word right now. This is what we're doing, folks. Second of all, maybe, maybe you're, you feel like there's something sprouting, but it's rocky soil in your life. And the moment that trouble and persecution comes, the moment that heartache comes, it's like, oh, it's so hard for you to stay committed because there's no deep roots. Today, you're saying, God, I want, I want to have deeper roots. I want the thorny, or excuse me, I want the rocky ground to go away and I want to have deeper roots. If that's you, why don't you just raise your hand all over the room? Yeah, thank you. Bunch of hands going up on that one. Very cool. How about, how about thorny? ground. Maybe there's a lot of circumstances or situations or, or things that are crowding out. They're suffocating, choking out God's word in your life. And you've been investing probably in the wrong things. And they might be good things. And God wants to give us good things. But at the same time, they should never suffocate out the main thing. And if you're in this room right now, and this, I gotta be honest, this is kind of where your pastor is today. I don't want anything to suffocate out God's word in my life. I don't want anything to distract me from what God wants to do in me, the word of God implanted in my life. If this is you, say, Pastor, pray for me. Why don't you just slip up your hand? There's just thorns, 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 things that are crowding and choking out. Yeah, so many of you, thank you so much. If you feel comfortable, I'd love to invite you to put your hand over your heart right now. Just wherever you sit. And I'd like to pray for you. Father, you see our soul. You see our heart. You see our inward person. God, would you transform us? God, I pray that what feels rocky, what feels thorny, what feels barren, God, would be cultivated once again. And new life would be restored. God, may nothing crowd out your love in our life. May we not allow anything. May we not feed anything, God, that distracts us from what you wanna do in our life. God, when trouble and persecution comes, God, I pray, God, that we would have deeper roots. God, when the hard times come, may we not just give up on you and say we're out just because we had a bad day or a bad week or a bad moment. Those moments are real, but God, your power, your strength is even stronger. May we dig deeper roots. God, today, may we respond to you, cultivate in our hearts a contrite heart, a pure and sensitive heart towards you. Renew a steadfast spirit inside of each and every one of us today. And God, as your word is placed in the right environment of our lives, God, may something begin to pop. May what is happening on the inside not be able to be contained. And may our life pop, 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 pop for all that you want in our lives. In your wonderful, incredible name, amen, amen, amen. Can we give the Lord a huge round of applause today? We love you, Jesus. Such a powerful word, church, and I don't know if you can hear it, but there's the pops. 
that were happening all across this place today as inwardly transformation was taking place in a way that could not be contained. And I'm just telling you that when you guys walk out of these doors, there's gonna be a world out there and they're gonna say, I don't know what it is about their life, but somehow today they're different than they were the day before. And it's because as a church, we're beginning to look more and more like Jesus Christ. And they're gonna see the popping that is taking place in your life. And they're gonna say, I want that. I want it. And we're going to be able to say, you can have it. His name is Jesus Christ. And there's going to be pop, 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 pop all in our community in the name of Jesus. And maybe that was you today. Maybe something in the moment of prayer that Pastor Josh was leading popped inside of your heart. And for the first time you were saying, I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. I'm not gonna hold anything back. He's doing something inside and it's changing me on the outside. And we would love to journey with you if that was you and you, you said, Jesus, I'm all yours. You just text the word new to the number that you see on the screen or you meet us right out there at the guest welcome desk in the lobby. And we, we wanna pray with you and we wanna give you some resources and we wanna walk with you through this transformation because God is up to something good. Yeah, he is. Uh, gee, I was thinking this morning and yeah. reflecting during that message and it hit me, I, I, I wasn't aware of it this morning until being here, that this weekend marks one year since I first came to Cross. Wow. And um, uh, the, the thorny soil that I found myself in and um, just distracted and hurting and pain. Yeah. Um, this has been an environment with people that have surrounded me to help me move toward nurturing soil yes. and I'm so grateful and if you are sitting here today whether it's your first Sunday or your hundredth Sunday <laughs> you're in an environment yeah. that is good for yes. you to start working on cultivating nurturing good soil and that's my hope and prayer for you today yes. as I've been able to experience that and as I mentioned at the beginning of the service for if this is your first time it's a big deal to us we want to meet you yeah. outside we have our big welcome party under the tent there's some activities before you get out there, so we'll make sure you get, get a hold of that. But come over to the tent. We want to hook you up with a free hot and cold tumbler and hook you up with a free cup of coffee from our friends at Campfire Coffee. I'll be out there with my bride and some of the other uh, church staff members would love to meet you personally and welcome you to Cross Church. Thank you for being here this morning. Yes, absolutely. And we don't want you guys to miss the things that are happening here because like I said, God is up to some awesome stuff. And, and one of those items is our known sisterhood event. It's our night that comes up on August the 24th. So this is for all our ladies. Do not miss out. And one way that you make sure that you know what's happening is you can download the Cross Church app. You can scan the QR code on the seat in front of you and you can see everything that is taking place because we're getting ready in the next season to kick off some life groups and we love doing family here together. So you don't want to miss out. And part of that is tonight we actually, Cross Church has rented out the coming aquatic center. It's free for you and your family. So come out at 6.30 p.m. and we're gonna have a family fun night, but make sure that you stay plugged in and you don't miss out on all the things happening. Yeah, join us tonight and you can actually use that same QR code to scan if you'd like to give your tithes and offerings. Yeah. So many people give sacrificially and generously to help us do what we do here as a body and a community so we can go out yeah. and do that together as a body and community. So thank you for your irrational generosity in the way you give to this community. Yeah, and as we get ready to go, can we just stand, Cross family? Because we say this each and every week. We are the church, so we don't have to end church today. We get to go be the church out there. And throughout the week, I just believe in faith that we're going to hear pop, 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 pop of lives being transformed by the glory and the goodness of our God. So as you guys walk out of those doors today, take part. There's some lemonade. Coming Aquatic Center. Have a great